Next, we're going to look at creating songs from scratch. Now, before I create a sequence, I'm going to go and initialize the internal song memory. So from sequencer into utility and select from menu to song initialize. Enter, execute. So we now have a blank internal song. Well, the song plays back instruments from the performance. So before you record your song, you need to select your performance into performance mode. Now I've created a performance here with a collection of four different patches, user 32. And I've selected the patches that I think are going to work with the sequence, but uh, they may not. It doesn't matter because I can change them later on. That's the beauty of MIDI sequencing. OK, back to the sequencer. We're now ready to start recording, so press the record button and you will hear our metronome playing, in this case at 120 beats per minute. Also, when you press the record button, you should see some recording parameters appear up here. Well, let's have a look at these in turn. Firstly, we see weight note. Well, this can be changed. This is simply the way in which recording commences. In this case, as soon as I play the keyboard, the machine will drop into record. But I could choose to have a two bar count in or a one bar count in. Over here, we have the recording mode. In this case, mix recording. I could change that to replace recording. All it means is, when I mix recording, if I go back over the same track, I can add more MIDI events. It won't overwrite anything that was previously recorded, whereas with replace, it will. I prefer to use mix recording when I'm recording in loop mode. And I can switch loop mode on over here by pressing this button, loop. I've got a four bar loop that's going to be repeated over and over, and this will help me lay the drum part first off. Just one more thing to explain before we start recording, and that is down here you'll see track one, part one. The part number will normally correspond to the track number, so that if we're recording parts 10, we'll put it down on track 10. Nice and logical. It is possible, however, to change this and work in another way, but for my purposes, this is the way I'm going to choose to work. So select part 10 using the part select buttons down here, and as soon as I start playing, we will drop into record. So. And you can hear that's now looping. Let's add the hi-hats. Now, you'll notice that although I played the hi-hats out of time, they've been miraculously pulled into time. This is because I'm using record quantize. And up here you can see quantize equals grid. Well, I've set up a 16th note grid template before I started, so any inaccurately played notes are pulled into time. Very, very useful feature. Okay, now without stopping the sequence, I can find other percussion instruments and record those, but I don't know where they are on the keyboard, so I'm going to press F6 and go into rehearsal mode. This means that I won't record anything I play whilst in this mode. So I can put down some tambourine. Again, back into rehearsal mode. Let's find the symbol. I'm going to put this on the first beat of the four bar section. Two, three, four. Okay, so that's the drums finished with. I'm now going to change the part that I record to the bass part. So using these controls down here, select part one. This is my bass sound. Again, let's rehearse. That's the sound. Now at this stage I could use the arpeggiator. Let's see what that sounds like. That's not quite what I'm looking for, so uh, I'm going to erase that. I can erase in real time by pressing F5. It says, real-time arrays, push keyboard or F6. Well, I'm going to use the keyboard. Just hold down the notes that I want to arrays, and the bass part disappears. Make sure I hold it down for the duration of the loop. That should do it. OK, exit. Let's switch the arpeggiator off and play the bass in in real time. And that, again, is now looping. 
Let's select part three. This is a keyboard part. Okay, so they're my three main parts. Now, supposing I want to change the bass sound, I can actually go and change the sound in performance mode without stopping the sequence. Press performance, and performance and patch together give me the part access. And now, using these controls, I can select part one. Let's try a few different bass sounds. Well, I think my original sound was probably the best one, so I'm going to go back to that. Stop the sequence, and that's the first section of my song recorded.